Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina Ma yahdhihillahu falamudhillalahu wa ma yudhlil falahariyalah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wa ahdahu la sharikalah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Arsalahu bilhaqqi bashiran wa nadhira Wa da'iyan ilallahi bi'idhnihi wa sirajan munira Amma ba'du faqad qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Majid A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan wa-jim Wa inni la gaffarun liman taba wa amana wa amila salihan Thumma ahtada Sadaqallahu al-Ali al-Azim We begin by saying alhamdulillah All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa creator and our sustainer We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity of performing the Jum'ah Salah. A couple of weeks ago, there was an incident involving a very handsome, talented cricketer and a soca artist. And the cricketer asked us to move on because it created a stir when he produced a, visit, a, a, a video with the soca artist for a song that she had produced and sung. There's something that I think we need to take note of as believers, as Muslims. This is not about the cricketer who is well loved, who is a Muslim, who we have accommodated many times here at the masjid. It's not about him, it's not about the artist who made the video. But there are lessons that we as believers can learn from these kinds of incidents. And while we want to move on, we should also learn and then move on. So what can we learn? When the video came out, many Muslims were very hurt, very upset. Even the family of our brother were very upset. And there were subsequently a number of retractions and apologies and articles and videos and so on talking about the incident from various quarters. But for the fans and the people who were upset, who felt disillusioned, disheartened, disappointed, it is a reminder for us as believers about who really we should look up to as our heroes who really belong to that category of people who we as Muslims, men and women, should use as a benchmark for our own selves. Whom can we aspire to be like? Whom can we use to inspire us in our daily lives? And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran, who are the ones who are the real examples for you? We just came out of the month of Rabiul Awwal, the month of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The famous verse of the Quran that is often recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا that there is for you in the Messenger of Allah a good example, a perfect example for that one who hopes, that one who hopes, who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strives and aspires to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal yawm al akhir and the last day and the day of judgment. وَذَكَرَ Allah kathira And he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala profusely. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is our real example. He is the one from whom we can draw parallels in our lives and lessons from the incidents that occurred with him in his life. As his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, his character, his, his akhlaq was that of the Qur'an. But how many of us know about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How many of us have ever read 
the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How many of us, of course, alhamdulillah, we read the Quran, we read the Hadith. We should also read the seerah. We should also understand how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dealt with different situations that came up to him. He was a man. He was a father. He was a husband. He was a friend. He was a leader. He was a teacher. And there is therefore examples for all of us in these situations. But we don't know his life. We don't take the time to learn about his life. We don't attend a class in which his life is being explained. And therefore, we subject ourselves to following those beneath him who are fallible just like ourselves. He is not the only example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for us. In the Quran, Allah says as well in verse number 3 of chapter number 60, قَدْ كَانَدْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there is for you a good example. في إبراهيم, in the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and those who were with him. How he rejected shirk. How he turned away from the people who were around him who were committing sin. The example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the father of Islam, Christianity and Judaism. The one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as his khalil. In his submission, in his obedience, in his loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are many lessons for us. But how many of us know about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions another example. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِمْرَعَةَ فِرْعَوْنِ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بِنِي لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتَ إِنَّكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought for you Mathalan, an example. Lilladina amanu of those who believed, meaning in the past. He's speaking about the wife of Fir'aun. The wife of Fir'aun. If the call out when she says, Rabbi, my Lord, build for me in the car close to you. Baitan fil Jannah, a house in the paradise. This was her. Iman, this was the level of her Iman in her circumstances, in her situation where she was being oppressed, where she was the, the wife of a great tyrant, Fir'aun. Yet look at her example. How many of our sisters have read about the story of the wife of Fir'aun, Asya? How many of them have understood the challenges she faced and found parallels in their own lives? These are the real heroes. These are the examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us as well, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us as well in hadith, he says, Usikum bi ashabi. He says, I enjoin upon you, Usikum bi ashabi, to follow my sahaba, follow my companions. And then those who came after them, and those who came after them. Meaning that amongst the Sahaba, the followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the Tabi'un, those who followed the Sahaba, or the Tabi Tabi'un, those who followed the Tabi'un, those three generations of people. There are glowing examples for us to follow. How many of us have read about the life story of Ahmad bin Hanbal? Rahimahullah. How many of us have read about Imam Bukhari? How many of us have read about Abdullah bin Mas'ud? Abdullah bin Abbas? The great companions or the Tabi'un or the Taba'a Tabi'un. The followers of the followers, those three generations. There are books, for example, one famous book that I know inspired me when I was a young person. It's called Saviors of the Islamic Spirit. Comes in three volumes and in that they give you the stories of these great scholars. And there are 
these great personalities, and there are many other books written since then. But we have to find the time, and in there we will find the inspiration, rather than looking around us for the inspiration and then being disappointed when the fallible will fall to the frailties of their own conditions. Another lesson that we can learn from that incident is as a believer, who do you identify with as a Muslim? The famous hadith that I'm sure every single person has heard before, man tashabahum fa, man tashabahum fa huwa, fa huwa minhum. Whosoever resembles a people, then he is from amongst them. Who behaves like a people, dresses like a people, takes up their habits, then he will be counted amongst those people on the day of judgment. He will rise up with those people on the day of judgment. So we live with people who do not accept Islam and we have to live with them especially being in a minority we do business with them we work with them we sit with them in our classes we teach them we learn from them we travel with them and there is nothing wrong with that they are human beings they are people of many times good mor moralities and good etiquettes Many of our own teachers are people who were non-believers. Many of us, when we go to the doctor, our favorite doctors are people who are not believers in Islam. But they do a good job for us. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is something wrong if it is that we succumb to their culture and their beliefs and we sacrifice the Islam that we follow to follow their own culture. And therefore, a lesson that we can learn is that we have got to keep our identity as believers. No matter who, with whom we interact, we can play cricket with anybody. We don't have to do with them what they do after the cricket match. And the reason is we, as believers, we represent Islam wherever we go. So we have got to keep our identity as Muslims and we have got to know where our limits are. What we can do with others who don't share that belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as we do, what we can do as followers and what we can't do with those who do not follow that. And for example, a person may, an example of this is that a person may go into a bar. He may go into a, rub, a rum shop, a Muslim brother may go into a rum shop to buy a Coca-Cola, to buy a bottle of water. He may tell himself that I am not doing anything wrong. Because I am only buying or drinking or sitting in the table there, on the chair there drinking a coca-cola but by doing it in the bar by going to the rum shop what image is he portraying as a muslim what signal is he sending about islam we fully well know what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about alcohol he can justify that he has not done anything wrong he has purchased a bottle of water but his what people will see is that this Muslim who we see him in the masjid every Friday or we see him every morning or every evening or he's wearing this jubba and this gown he is now in the bar he is drinking something it must be acceptable it is not acceptable not because anybody could say that you went and drank alcohol they would be committing a sin if they lied on you like that but you have stopped, you have changed, you have decreased, you have diluted, you have swerved, 
the perception of what Islam stands for by your presence there. And that is what we mean that a lesson we can learn as believers is to keep your identity as a Muslim. Wherever you are, you have got to know what my limits are as a believer, what I can do and what I cannot do. And a third lesson that came out of this incident is that all of us sin. All of us sin. It's bad enough to sin, but it's worse to sin in the open. It's worse to do something that goes against the laws of Allah openly. What does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says? He says, everyone from my nation will be forgiven, except those who sin in public. SubhanAllah. Except those who sin in public. Not that you should not seek forgiveness from Allah, Allah forgives all sins. But this hadith is to show the severity of that kind of sin. Among them, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, is a man who commits an evil deed in the night that Allah has hidden for him. Then in the morning he says, Oh people, I have committed this sin. Not saying it in a, me in a way of being you know, regretful, but saying it in a way of being proud. Last night, I scored. Last night, I scored. You all know what that means. Right? That's a, not just a sin, but a serious sin. The Prophet wasallam says, His Lord had hidden it in the night, but in the morning, He reveals what Allah has hidden. His Lord had hidden his sin in the night. Only he and whoever else was involved in the sin, whatever kind of sin it was, knew about it. Allah hid it in the night and he revealed it in the morning. How serious is that? Now think about what we do, especially young people, when we post videos on social media about the things that we did. Thinking that it would bring to us some notoriety, some popularity, that we become famous, that perhaps our videos may go viral. So we wearing a hijab today, but last night we were dancing on a pole. Right? And we feel that it makes us famous. Perhaps it does. Perhaps it does. But it will make you famous in front of Allah in a different way. Because while you may have committed your sins privately in a pub or in a club or in a disco or wherever, now you've posted it on social media. And now it's on Instagram and Facebook. And now everybody is seeing it. So a lesson we can learn is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already warned us about sin so many times. Don't make the sin worse by making it public. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hiding that sin from you, from others, so that you can secretly repent. But when you post it, then subhanallah, nobody even thinks about your repentance because they think you have done it because you are proud. And the fourth lesson, perhaps the most important lesson, is that whatever we do in life, we will make mistakes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always ready to accept our mistakes. And Allah says in Surah Taha verse 82, Wa inni lagafarun. Allah says, and surely I am the most forgiving. Lagafarun. Gafar is one of the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Liman, for whom Allah says he is the most forgiving, but he gives conditions. Liman taba. For who seeks repentance? For who seeks repentance? Wa amana and who believes? Wa amila salihan and who good, does good deeds? And Allah says the fourth condition, thumma tada, and then He goes on that path of guidance. In other words, He doesn't make repentance just as a game with Allah. That oh, I committed a sin, I'll repent today, but I have in the back of my mind that tomorrow I'll start back again. 
I'm okay if I do it again, I'll repent again. No, but he takes that as a lesson and a chance that Allah gives to him and he moves forward in the proper manner. That is why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Atta'ibu min adhamb kaman la dhamba lahu. That the one who has completely repented of sin is like the one who has not sinned at all. The one who has completely repented from sin is like the one who has not sinned at all. And Abu Huraira reports that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if your sins that Allah says, if your sins, that no, the Rasul says that if your sins were to reach to the heavens, your sins were to reach to the heavens, and then you repented, Allah will still accept your repentance. Allah will still accept your repentance. So, we commit sins, we do make, we make mistakes, but Allah says He is the most forgiving of those who forgive. And therefore, we seek repentance, we believe in Allah, we do good deeds because the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa says the good deeds will wipe away the evil and then we try our best not to repeat those sins again. So sometimes when something happens in our lives, there are lessons that we can learn. This is not about bashing anybody or criticizing or making them feel bad. But this is about us as believers learning from the experiences of others so that we ourselves may not make the same mistakes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us, accept all of us, and enter all of us into Jannatul Firdaus. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimina min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-gafuru rahim.